Hello and welcome everybody that's joined us. Today we're talking about a really important topic that you would think there's probably not much to talk about, but there is. And why this topic matters is that today, this is the world of teams. Teams have a lot of meetings and those meetings can either be absolutely miserable as many of us have experienced or magnificent. And our goal in the conversation today is to help all of us have more magnificent meetings. So loving the, um, the chat. Thanks for those of you who are on um, contributing to the question. Why is it that um, meetings are challenging and not magnificent? And John shared because there's a poorly defined or missing purpose. Absolutely. Um, Jody said participants who don't participate. Yes. So passively, they shouldn't be actually attending the meeting. And we'll talk about that. Sherry said meetings that run over the scheduled time. Yes. Or don't start on time, right? For those of us who work really hard to show up on time, um, challenging. Um, John said having a meeting to plan for scheduling a meeting. Yes. The meeting before the meeting. Let's have a meeting to talk about the meeting. Not necessary. Um, and Clint said um, no agenda um, or even not following the agenda could be another thing. So all really good input. Keep it coming. Um, and today what we're going to be talking about is um, some really cool things that I'd like to share with you. Um, so audience participation requested because I love benefiting from each of each one of you and your brilliance. And so thanks for continuing to contribute in the chat. And I'm going to ask you to answer a question for me. So we're going to bring up a poll right now. And I'd love to hear from you. Um, recognizing that one of the most complained about things um, at every organization we've worked with is meetings. So um, if you look at your screen right now, we have a poll. Um, which one is your biggest frustration? And we've heard a lot already um, in the chat about what people get frustrated by. Um, no agenda, no purpose, right? So I don't know why the meeting's held. Um, I just get invited to a meeting and it's a complete waste of my time. Um, John says people are not prepared. Yes, another frustration. And the same people um, always come late. So, um, those are all true. And for you, as you think about your meeting frustration, which one is your biggest? Is it that you have too many meetings? Not sure why the meeting's happening. It doesn't start or end on time. Or you're coming to meetings that are completely a waste of your time. So what is your greatest challenge um, as you think about meetings? All right, so I'm gonna end the poll and share the results. So we've got um, the winner is I have no idea why a meeting was held, which gets back to our very first input from the chat, which is around a poorly defined or missing purpose. And we're gonna tackle that today. Uh, the second challenge, meetings not starting or ending on time, and then just plain too many meetings. So absolutely. All right. So our focus for today, we're going to talk about three phases, um, the three phases that you need to um, make sure you follow in order to have a magnificent meeting. We're going to talk about the two most important elements of a meeting agenda, some tips to increase the value of all the meetings that you attend, and a couple of ways for you to avoid getting consumed by the meetings you're participating in. So. Before we jump into that, what exactly is a magnificent meeting? So I've come up with these four key things that for me make up a magnificent meeting. First is honoring people's time. So it's not just about starting and ending on time, but it also ties into the third thing, which is in just inviting the people who need to be there. Sometimes I find in meetings, people invite everybody that could possibly attend versus the people who need to be there. Then getting back to our number one challenge in meetings that you collectively identified, 
clarity on what needs accomplished in that meeting, which gets to the purpose. And finally, a magnificent meeting is one that stays focused on the outcomes. We don't start rambling or, um, oh my goodness, what about this? You know, the whole tangent, look, there's a bird. So those are the attributes of a magnificent meeting. Honoring people's time, being really clear and specific on what needs accomplished, inviting only the people who need to be there, and then staying focused on the outcomes. All right. Now we're going to talk about the three key phases, and I'm going to call this the PFF, just like we have a BFF. This is your PFF for great meetings, for magnificent meetings. So step number one, or phase number one, is planning, then facilitating, and then follow-up. So um, planning. Oops, sorry. Hmm. I thought I had a different slide here, but planning. Um, Planning is around figuring out what is most important. What is it that you need to, as we said here, accomplish? What is the purpose of the meeting? Then we jump into facilitation. Um, and oh, and also wanted to cover in planning, you need to make sure that we've considered those things. We talked about a magnificent meeting was about who needs to be there, what you need to accomplish. Do you have enough time to accomplish it? Or do you have too much time? Um, and generally, meetings should occur not to inform people, but to engage them in a conversation. If all you're doing is sharing information, then you may not need to have a meeting. So planning comes first, then facilitation. And as we facilitate, we need to stick to the agenda, which is why that first step of planning is absolutely critical. How can you accomplish what needs accomplished, back to the purpose, in the least amount of time and make sure that people have all the data points they need and are prepared to achieve the outcome. Nothing is more frustrating than having a meeting where the conversation meanders aimlessly and you don't know what you're going to accomplish. So make the meetings matter by focusing on achieving the outcome that was defined and ensuring that there's somebody paying attention and facilitating. Um, we're going to talk about a resource at the end of this webinar that you have access to. And in there, it talks about some different roles that people can play. So it may seem a little bit formal, but it can be helpful at the beginning of a meeting to say who's responsible for facilitating. That usually ends up being the person who is um, the one that called the meeting. Um, who's going to take notes? Who's going to follow up? All of those things. If you define roles, that will enable you in your meetings to have a better outcome. Um, and John says, yes, clarity has become such a rarity. It is true. Um, Jody said one of the issues that she ch is challenged by is bulldozing a decision without getting buy-in, which means there really isn't consensus. And I agree with that. We're gonna, we'll talk about that. Um, actually, let's do that right now. Facilitating a meeting. Um, when I talk about the agenda, see. These are the two essential items of a meeting agenda. So I'm going to connect this into when you're facilitating the meeting, yes, we need to be clear on the purpose and the outcomes. So that needs to find as you plan for the meeting and it needs to be part of the agenda, two absolutely essential items so that everybody understands what's the purpose, what are the outcomes. And I even encourage people back to our facilitation step, when you are facilitating a meeting, why not begin the meeting by asking each, per each person that's participating, what does success look like for you in this meeting? Or what do you understand the purpose to be? Because that enables everybody to get started on the same page that you're clear. Here's, here's what we're doing here. Here's what we're trying to accomplish. That's the first thing in purpose. Now, outcomes may seem similar, but back to Jody's point where um, decisions get bulldozed, I want to connect the decision making with outcomes. So as you think about the different elements in an agenda for your webinar, you may have um, a situation where you want to bring some information forward and the people that are there in the meeting are contributing to that. So you need to have a discussion around a topic so that 
Maybe you need um, this input so that you can go make a decision, or maybe you need the input for another purpose to contribute um, in some way to a project. So that's what I mean by outcomes. Purpose is the overall purpose of the meeting. Outcomes connect to every single element of the agenda. And it's where um, we actually, Scott and I were coaching an executive team. It was really fascinating. We're in this session and they had probably a 20 minute conversation about a decision that needed to be made. They went back and forth and finally they reached a decision. At the conclusion of that, I summarized the decision and then they rediscussed it because there were some people who hadn't realized they made the decision. Back to Jody's point about um, having a, a decision bulldozed without really understanding that's what was happening. So when you need to make a decision, this connects to the outcome. It needs to be clear before you begin the discussion that the outcome of this agenda item is that we are collectively making a, dis a decision. That's one option. Or number two, Maybe it's collectively you're giving me input and then I'm making a decision. You see the difference? Because there's nothing more frustrating than coming into a meeting and believing that you have a voice in a decision contributing to a conversation and then somebody else making the decision where you, you did not understand that they were actually planning to make that decision. So to Jody's point, you can feel bulldozed when that occurs. And it's not right or wrong that it's a group decision or an individual decision. What's wrong is when it's not clarified at the beginning. So that's what I mean about outcomes here, that the two essential items as you're putting together an agenda, purpose and then outcomes for every single agenda item. What are you trying to accomplish? Are you having a discussion? Are you making a decision? And then if you are, is it the person who called the meeting that's making the decision or is it a group decision? really important. All right, so we've talked about planning and in planning, you're going to set up the agenda, clarifying the purpose and the outcomes. Then you facilitate through the meeting. And ideally, if everybody's clear on what the purpose is and what the outcomes are for every single agenda, that helps the conversation stay on point as you facilitate. And then the last piece in the PFF, plan, facilitate, and follow up, is the follow-up. And when you follow up, this is where decisions are summarized and shared with everybody who needs to know and action items are summarized and shared with everyone who needs to know. And here's what's really interesting, and I'll jump back to the facilitation part. As you conclude a meeting, how many of you actually pause and do a review of the action items and the decisions? I know for myself, there's times where it feels like, you know, we're so busy having the conversation. It comes to the end of the meeting time and it's like, okay, end of meeting, let's move to the next one. I would encourage everyone to give themselves a five to 10 minute buffer at the end of a meeting to review, did we accomplish our purpose? Here's the actions that need accomplished and here are the decisions that we made. And then once you verbally talked through them, that's, this is the follow-up piece. So it, the follow-up begins at the end of the meeting and then it continues as you share that information. Because how many times have you had a situation where somebody made a decision in a meeting and you weren't informed of that. So you were moving in a direction that was completely contrary to the decision was made because you were never informed. So that's the value and the purpose of follow-up. So PFF, plan, facilitate, and then follow up. And back to in the planning process, the two important items of the agenda are around purpose. And Jody reminded us, absolutely true. In a meeting, there are times where we need to inform people. And this is interesting because I've been in meetings where the intention was informing and then we start having a discussion as if we were coming to a decision about something, but that was never the intention. And that's also where meetings can get really frustrating because we're not all clear on why this information is being shared and what we're trying to accomplish. So are we having a discussion? Are we making a decision? Are we gathering input? What is the outcome of this agenda item? Really essential. 
So we talked about um, what a magnificent meeting is. We walked through PFF, planning, facilitating, and following up. And now I'd like to share three tips that will help you to increase the value of every meeting that you attend. And those three tips, ground it, shorten it, and frame it. Those are my tips. So we're going to talk about each of those. All right, grounding. Um, this is a really important step that we often overlook. So let's think about a typical meeting. Meeting starts. Sometimes there's some small talk, right? We chat, how are you doing, what's going on? And then we jump right into the conversation. I'm going to suggest that there's a better way. So it's very valuable to have a discussion and interact with people on a human level. So I'm not saying don't, don't do the small talk. It is useful just to check in with people and see how they're doing. However, do you consistently, for every meeting you attend, establish the starting point? Like, what are the assumptions we're making? What, you know, do we have the purpose? Do we have the agenda in place? making sure we're all starting from the same place. Because if you're not, then how do you get to the conclusion, the ending place, and actually achieve the purpose together? So many meetings just jump into discussion and they forget the step of getting everyone grounded or oriented to what's really important. Uh, this, later this week, I'll be facilitating a conversation with an executive team where they're talking about how to translate their strategy into action. Like, what's the specific plan over the coming 90 days? And it's fascinating because it's really uh, um, tempting to just jump in and say, what are the actions? What do we need to do? And I'm actually taking the first two hours and walking them through a grounding process to ensure that we're all starting at the same place. The grounding consists of um, defining assumptions, right? Like where are we all coming from? And there's another exercise that I find really helpful in a more extended meeting context. And that's rules of engagement. Now, um, one, of the, one of the techniques I use in establishing rules of engagement, and you can do it a lot of different ways. It can, it can be um, con contributions from the group. It can be a proposed list that you come up with and share and people comment on. But I'm going to give you three questions that I often use when I'm establishing rules of engagement in a meeting context. And usually it's a little bit longer meeting. But the three questions are, what do you need from me? And that's when I'm serving in the role of a facilitator. What do you need from each other? And what do you need from yourself? And it's really interesting, pausing and taking the time so that everybody reflects on that. What do you need from me as the facilitator? What do you need from each other? How you're gonna show up with each other? And how, what do you need from yourself? Those three questions help ground the context of that meeting and it becomes much more productive. The other benefit from that for me as a facilitator is it gives me the ability to call, call out whenever we're getting off track. So for example, I've been in um, uh, facilitating meetings where people say, hey, you know, one of the things we need from you is to ensure that we stay focused, right? We talked about that as one of the challenges that occur during meetings. People are not focused. Well, when, when I'm facilitating and I see that's occurring, I can say, hey, everyone, remember you asked me to help you stay focused and we're not focused right now. And I can pull them back because I have their permission to do so. So those are just a couple tips around getting everyone started um, in the same place. One other suggestion, and I found this to be really useful as well. At the beginning of the conversation, when you're having a meeting, one of the questions you can ask to get everybody focused is this. What's distracting you from being fully present right now? And that's what's interesting about that is having everybody call out, you know, whatever's going on that's creating distraction for them. By naming their distraction, it actually helps them get more focused. So these are all different ways that you can ground the meeting and get started in a better place. Next tip for all of you is shorten your meetings. 
how can you spend less time in meetings? Um, one of the things that we've done at different, different points um, in our career is start a meeting five minutes after and end five minutes before the hour. So that gives people a buffer of approximately 10 minutes to make the transition. So whether it's having a 50 minute meeting or imagine scheduling just a 30 minute meeting. Can you still accomplish everything in that amount of time? So shorten the meeting is another way that you can have a more magnificent meeting because you focus on the value. Why do we have to have an hour long meeting? Make it 30 minutes. And then third, frame your meeting. So this gets back to a recurring theme through this conversation, which is purpose and outcomes. Right. And so the framing can occur not just from you saying, here's the purpose, but ensuring that you have input from everybody in attendance, that they're in agreement and they understand what that frame is. Because when you're consistent and clear about that frame, it means that you can stay focused. And by staying focused, you can actually accomplish something. So Again, getting value out of all meetings that you attend, ground them, spend that time at the beginning of the meeting to ensure alignment, consistency, focus, whatever that looks like for the meeting you're facilitating, ground it. If you can, shorten it. And then by all means, always frame the meeting in the context. Why are we here? What are we going to accomplish? So those are my tips for increasing the value of all your meetings. Now I'd like to share something that has been controversial, but I think incredibly valuable for all the individuals I've shared this with. And that is tips for you to use in order to avoid being consumed by meetings. This is the back to back to back to back to back meetings. So this first one, I remember sharing this with the leadership team and they were shocked. They were like, can you really do that? So the tip was, Never accept a meeting invitation that does not have an agenda. And I would say an agenda or a purpose. And they were like, oh my goodness, because how many of us just get that meeting invite, which shows up in our inbox and we just click accept. So um, the opportunity, what I shared with the leadership team was, if you start um, declining meetings that don't have an agenda, you're gonna send a message and you can even, um, what we did was we came up with a little script that they would respond with the decline and say, um, I don't understand what the meeting is about or the value that I can contribute, so I'm not going to accept. Um, and then it gave the person a chance to then reply and say, well, actually here's the agenda and why you need to attend. But those are two criteria I encourage you to evaluate every meeting invitation with, which is, does it have an agenda? So do you understand the purpose of the meeting? And number two, are you clear on the value that you're bringing to that meeting? Or are you just being invited because you should be? So imagine that if you stopped accepting meetings that didn't have an agenda, wow, your calendar could look a lot different. Um, probably would shock people for a while as also. Um, and then on the flip side of that, if you're the one scheduling the meeting, then it's your responsibility to always ensure that you put an agenda in that meeting. So that is one tip to avoid having your calendar consumed by meetings. Just don't accept it if you don't understand the purpose or have an agenda and know the value you contribute. Then I mentioned before about limiting the amount of time you spend in meetings. So what if by being really clear on what you need to accomplish and very specific on the outcome of the agenda items, you were able to have a meeting that was only 10 or 20 minutes. Amazing, right? So the more planning, remember PFF, plan, facilitate, follow up, the more planning you invest to be clear and specific, the shorter you can make your meetings facilitate them around that clarity, and then you just follow up. And it'll be amazing how much less time you have to invest in a meeting. And then that last piece around documentation, I mentioned the importance of follow-up. So whether that's communicating, communicating in an email to individuals that participated in the meeting or even beyond that, what those decisions are, another opportunity 
in the documentation is not just the email follow-up, but do you have a place where you keep all of those decisions, all of those discussions, all the information um, for us internally in our teams, we use OneNote pages. So we have for our team meetings a consistent location. So if we say, you know, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, we had a discussion on this. What did we decide? What are we going to do about this? We're actually able to go back and refer to that um, as, a, as a source of truth where we can always find out what those discussions and decisions were. So three tips on how you can avoid being consumed by meetings. And if you have any, love to hear from you in the chat. Ketty says, outcome is so important and your role in it. Yes, thank you for that reminder. Um, I mentioned a resource that we'd love to share with you and um, pay attention to your emails. Make sure that you take a look. If you don't see this, look in your uh, junk folder and then um, make a, um, indication to your junk folder that we're actually not junk, but in the follow-up message that we send to you that will have a recording of this, we will also provide a link to this effective meeting document. And it covers all three of those important steps I shared with you around PFF, planning, facilitating, and following up uh, with a little bit more detail and information in them. So a quick review. A magnificent meeting, which is my hope for each and every one of you, that all the meetings you attend are magnificent, that it, they honor people's time, starting and ending on time, but also not taking more time than they need to. Being clear on what's going to be accomplished, the purpose of the meeting, as well as the outcome of every single agenda item. Only invite the individuals who actually need to show up and do the agenda items that are going to be discussed. Don't invite everybody just as a CYA technique. And then finally, stay focused on the outcomes. If you've planned well, then you can be sure that the outcomes can be achieved through the agenda. So stay focused. So next steps. Um, we've had a blast being with all of you for the month of April um, through these webinars. We've done Wednesday webinars the whole month of April. We're looking to transition to live stream on LinkedIn. So um, for those of you who are on, we'd love to hear in the chat, are there any topics that you'd be interested in learning more about or just discussing? So this isn't necessarily about me. It's about you know, what conversations can we have in a live stream that would be fun, interesting, and useful to you? So if there's any topics, share that. And the other thing I was thinking about is wouldn't it be fun to have a series of guests that we invite on and have a conversation with? And then, of course, everybody participating in the live stream um, could ask questions and share their thoughts as well. So I was considering having a series around change and bringing in some of the thought leaders in the change management field. Um, everyone from Linda Ackerman Anderson and Dean Anderson to Daryl Connor and more. So um, if there's some guests and people that you'd enjoy hearing from, let us know in the chat. I'd be curious um, who you might enjoy hearing from in a live stream. I already mentioned, we'll send you an email with the replay of the webinar and links to resources. And the other fun thing that we're going to be sharing more about with you in the um, weeks to come is we're actually launching a leadership community. And it's going to be the Rebel Leader Community, which is connected to the Rebel Leader Field Guide series that we uh, came out with last year. That'll be launching in May. Um, for those of you who are interested, hope that you join us there. Um, but that's one of our exciting uh, developments in the weeks to come. So if you go to therebelleader.com, you can learn a little bit more about the community. And what's next? You'll see in the chat, there is a link. And in, if you use that link, you can join us because we've been doing each week 30 minutes of content and 30 minutes of connection. So if you'd like to join us in conversation, we can be talking about meetings or anything else you'd like to discuss. Um, jump over. We're going to join you on a um, 
on a meetings line. And so that again is posted in the chat. Go in and copy that for yourselves so that you're able to join us if you have the time for a conversation after this webinar. So a thank you to all of you who have participated in this week's webinar on Magnificent Meetings or any of the webinars that we've held during the month of April. Um, we appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for sharing your brilliance in this chat. We'll summarize that information and share that in the follow-up email as well. So have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday and hopefully I will see some of you in our connection time. Thanks everyone, have a great day.